hello and welcome to another session of fisher five star webinar and uh, this is a tri series and you are all gathered here for the second series of this webinar and i'm navin today's uh, host for the session so there are some few do's and don'ts about this particular webinar for better experience please use only google chrome or firefox just because that we have experienced similar kind of or bad situations in terms of network and uh, things like stuff with internet explorer please do not parallel downloads just because that it could hamper your relay in terms of either in terms of video or in terms of audio all the questions will be answered at the end please be patient and please use the question tab to answer or put your questions together so this will be the interface that you will be looking in for or you will be familiar at this point of time use this double arrow mark to do to have a full view mode and use the chat box chat box to say hi hello questions tab especially please use it for questions alone and polls finally please use this poll we value your feedback and uh, for our betterment it will be great helpful time split for today's session is in terms of uh, 3:30 to 4:30 and the first 45 minutes we are going to utilize it for the webinar the content of the the main hero of this webinar then the 10 minutes with the question and answer session and 5 minutes of poll and feedback session so as we told uh, today we are going to we have a part of we are part of the tri series webinar five star webinar the first series already people have attended many people have attended for this thanks for that and that is that was basically in terms of uh, basic five star solutions and this one will be in terms of performance and setting up the defense to explain this we have two uh key people from the industry and one is mr mom uh, muzaffar ahmed sayed he is the regional fire stop manager for fisher and he are, he has overall 10 plus years of experience in this construction construction industry and especially 5 plus years of experience in with fisher and uh, he has actually uh, traveled across gcc and worked with major projects across gcc uh, his specialization goes in terms of fire stop systems post installed anchors and insulation systems he has a very good certification from international accredited organizations like institute of fire stop uh, fire engineers from uk this is one of the renowned uh, institutions which actually uh, certifies the key people and uh, if in case someone wants to register themselves or enhance their knowledge this is one of the key institution then one can go and mr muzaffar has been uh, certified as one of the key person from them he has a uh, more number of awards to his collection and uh, we welcome him on to the stage and uh, we have a uh, other presenter from our end from germany his name is constantin wiget he is the head of fire stop and facade systems he constantly travels across the globe so he brings whole lot of experience across the, from the globe uh, most of the time he actually is in travel and uh, this is the first of the instance where he actually comes to the picture and helps us to get more insight about fire stop solutions his experience is almost somewhere around 8 plus years of experience in uh, fisher and with fire, facade and fire stop engineering that's in a nutshell o to mr said musafar right so first of all i would like to welcome all of you again and uh, it's a pleasure having you all here thank you very much for taking out the time and trying to learn about fire stop especially fisher fire stop uh, as navin said this is the second part and the first part could be viewed i have just posted the link in the chat box now there would be several questions that you might uh, come up with that might uh, be there in your mind we request you to use the questions pane instead of the chat pane so if you type inside the chat pane any questions we might miss them so try using the questions pane and you can post any of your questions there and without further ado let me go into the details so just to recap sorry give me a moment yeah yeah so i hope my screen is visible 
So just to recap, in the first installment of these Firestop series, we had discussed some case studies concluding the importance of taking a balanced approach to fire protection, which should include active as well as passive system. To understand better, we saw how fire behaves and understood the different stages of fire. When we saw the fire stop as part of the requirement of passive fire protection and different codes requiring the same. So let us continue our series and le learn some important aspects of fire stop technologies and system testing. Again, just to remind you, please post your questions in the question answer pane during the presentation anytime you get a doubt. We will collect all the questions at the end. We have a time about 15 minutes where we will try to answer as many questions as possible and any missed out will be replied through email. So in this episode, we will discuss the Firestop as a concept and delve into the technology behind the Firestop products function under fire condition. Then my colleague Konstantin from our head office will discuss in detail about how the Firestop systems are tested and certified. Finally, we go into the question answer session. Now, this series will not be talking about applications and the requirements of Firestop itself. We'll be talking about only the specific topics related to Firestop as a concept, as well as the testing and certification. So this would be uh, wrapping up our second series. And then in the third series, we'll be looking at all the applications related to this Firestop. So just as a concept, Firestop systems are tested systems designed to reinstate the fire resistance of a given assembly after the fire barrier has been compromised by a breach. The breach or opening in the wall or floor would be required to make the building function and cannot be avoided. For example, a wall that was constructed with a rating of two hours would be breached by an MEP contractor who comes and drills a hole to pass his service, thereby reducing the rating of this wall to, two, uh, to zero hours. He installs his service but the rating still remains zero. The rating is only reinstated after an appropriate Fisher Fire Stop system is applied, thereby ensuring the compartmentation that was intended. Now we should remember Fire Stop is always a system and rating is given to an overall system which includes the substrate, the penetrant, the backing material, and the Fisher Fire Stop sealant. The sealant on its own does not have a resistance rating. So we will look a little bit more about resistance as well as reaction in the upcoming slides. Similarly, the civil joint between a fire rated wall and the floor is inherently constructed with a breach. The Fisher Fire Stop system is applied to get the rating that was required and close the breach. Again, the civil joints are also a system consisting of the substrate, backing material, and the Fisher Fire Stop sealant. Examples of these breaches can be seen in building projects quite frequently. Flames, smoke, toxic gases escape from the compartment via these breaches as small as pencil hole. Now, oftenly the breaches are much, much, much bigger than the pencil hole that we encounter. Now, this completely compromises the fire life safety strategy of the building, thereby putting all the occupants at risk. Since there, in this image itself, you could see several types of penetrants that have breached the fire resisting assemblies. Since there are several types 
of breaches, we have a range of products that would be required to treat these breaches as well. Fisher, as a manufacturer, has five stop products to attend to all usual as well as hidden surprises that up, could occur on a project site in terms of fire stopping. Now, these products are either sealants, sprays and coatings, wraps and collars, or some special product. We will see the use of individual products based on actual site applications in our final episode of this series. Now, many a times we get questioned on how these products generally work when exposed to fire. We would see how, what is the technology behind these fire stop products and their behavior when they are exposed to fire. So our fire stop products function predominantly and in four main types of uh, ways when they are exposed to fire. So number one is called as intumescent. Now what you can see here on your screen is a small strip of wrap, which when exposed to fire, expands. Now you can imagine that there is a big gap in the wall and you have a small strip that would have been closed that gap, but when there is a fire, it would expand and close that opening. Now intumescent could be of two main types, either an intumescent without any pressure, thereby it wouldn't exert any pressure on the service. So you could imagine a metallic pipe which would not require any pressure to close, or a plastic pipe which would require huge pressure to actually crush that service itself like wraps and collars. Similarly, the second type would be endothermic. So we have a product called FCPS, which is coated with an endothermic coating. Now what this coating does is when it is exposed to flames, it releases water thereby cooling down the environment at that particular location and preventing passage of flame and gases and and heat through itself, thereby resisting again and ensuring the compartmentation is met. The third type is called as ablative or carbonization. So what you see in this image is a product called FIAM after curing. When exposed to fire, it forms a charred coating on top of itself. This char is insulative in nature and prevents heat transfer from this particular location. Also, the sealant would prevent smoke and gases to pass through. So the product name is FIAM. Lastly, we have products which work on the principle of being just insulative. So what you see here in this image is a Fisher intumescent putty pad. All that the putty pad does is prevents flame and smoke to pass through it because it does not disintegrate when it's exposed to extreme heat. Similarly, we have a product called motor, which would prevent passage of smoke, flame, ga gases through it just by being present and not disintegrating when exposed to flames. There are two aspects that are generally related to fire which many people get confused with, namely reaction to fire and resistance to fire. When we talk about products or material, we are talking about reaction to fire. The reaction to fire is the measurement of how a material or a system will contribute to fire development and spread, particularly in the very early stages of fire where evacuation is crucial. The reaction to fire has several parameters that are being tested. For example, the ignitability, surface spread of flame, smoke develop, etc., of the product or the material under question. For example, under the EN code, the combustibility of a material is classified under several letters 
specifically B class material which is a combustible material a simple exposure to flame of a commonly available PU based foam can show the difference for example the B1 foam does not readily ignite however remember it is still combustible B2 category of foam is generally ignitable Finally, the B3 foam, which just is used as a filler in openings, is highly combustible material or readily ignitable material. We should not confuse the reaction to fire with the resistance to fire. Also, we should remember that the reaction to fire is not given in terms of time. So you cannot say that this product is having a reaction to fire for four hours or it is not combustible. To fire for four hours right so sometimes a product or a material which is not really good under the reaction to fire might be a very good in resistance to fire so what we see here is a dry wood piece which everybody knows that when it is exposed to fire will burn however if you go to any project site you would see several of fire rated doors which are constructed from plain wood. When we are talking about that rating, we are always talking about a resistance to fire. Now, resistance to fire is the measurement of the ability of a material or a system to resist and ideally prevent the passage of fire from one distinct area to another area. Let's go back to the wall that was constructed and reinstated. Now, if there is a fire in one area behind the wall, the resistance of fire dictates that this flame, heat, smoke, toxic gases are prevented from passing by through this fire rated barrier to the other non affected sites. Especially when you're measuring, you're measuring the integrity of the wall itself as well as the insulation. Of this system as a whole that is in question so generally the resistance to fire is given as a time frame a length of time that would be required for this assembly to disintegrate and allow passage of fire and flame and smoke and all of those gases right these things are generally tested according to certain standards now, I would like to invite my colleague, Constantine, to describe these test standards. So hello also from my side, a warm welcome from Germany and thanks for having me today. So Musafir explained to you the functioning principles of our products and it's great to know that our products work well, but the valid question is, how are they tested and certified? And that's a valid question because in fire stopping, it is not possible to assess performances upon calculations. This is why testing and certification is really important to make sure fire stop, um, the fire stop applications are safe. Sometimes testing and certification is mixed up and the concept is subjected to mis uh, common misconceptions. We will clarify this today. But first, Musafir, what are the relevant testing standards for the Middle East region? Yes, Constantine, that's a really good question. Now, in the Middle East, fire stop systems, again, are accepted as tested systems, and there are several testing codes which give the parameters and procedures for testing. The fire life safety code specify the testing codes acceptable within their jurisdiction. For example, in UAE, the code that is in question is issued by the General Command of Civil Defense centrally, and it calls for ASTM E814, UL1479, EN1366 as the acceptable test standards, among others, for penetration fire stopping. Similarly, for the fire resistive joint system, ASTM 1966 UL2 2079 BSEN 1366 Part 4 are the acceptable codes, among others. 
finally, for perimeter fire barrier system, the codes that are acceptable are ASTM E2307, BSEN 1364 part three and part four for perimeter fire barriers. Similarly, for other regions, including Saudi Arabia or be it Oman, all of these have similar test standard requirements. Right, Constantine, I'm back to you on description of what these test standards call for. Very good. So these are a lot of, uh, of numbers and, uh, and digits. And we start with explaining what is most important to judge these testing standards, and that's the resistance to fire. This is what it is all about. And the resistance to fire is the ability not only of a material, but of a system to resist fire over a certain duration. It is expressed in units of time, minutes or hours, and two main characteristics are usually measured. That's the integrity and the insulation. Now, let me explain how integrity and insulation is measured during a fire test. This explanation is very simplified, but it does explain the essentials. First, we use the example of a European fire test. Under European testing, the integrity E measures the time a system resists before allowing the passage of flames. Generally, the integrity is measured with a so-called cotton pad test. A cotton pad is placed upon suspicious spots that may occur during the fire testing. And then if the cotton pad ignites, then the test specimen is failed. And at this time, the time is recorded. The insulation or temperature rating measures when a test specimen conducts heat on certain areas as defined in the relevant testing standards. And this is usually done with a thermocouple that is measured when the time exceeds 180 degrees Celsius over the ambient temperature. This temperature is really important because 180 degrees usually is the self-ignition temperature of a lot of materials. Now, under American fire testing, then we call it F and T rating, and this is expressed in hours. And the rules are similar in their fundamentals. However, we have some differences that exist. Probably the biggest difference is explained on the next slide. This is the so-called host stream test. Under UL and ASTM testing, verticals are subjected to the host stream test. This means that a duplicate test specimen at half the duration of the original test assembly is impacted by a 30 PSI water stream as specified in the standard from 20 feet distance. The objective is to prove the specimen stability. Under European testing, however, there's no requirement for a host stream test. However, the pressure of the furnace is different and the pressure gradient ensures the stability of the actual test specimen. We also have testing for secondary attributes, such as air leakage before or during the test and water tightness testing. These may also be important for certain products. These testing data can be included into the relevant approvals or they can also be stated in, re in separate performance documents. You can just speak to your Fisher technical engineers on the project to make sure to get the relevant information. But on the next slide, just let us, uh, let us take a look on the primary performance criteria for fire stopping. Here in this table, you can see an overview of different testing standards relevant to fire stopping. Despite some technical differences in testing, for example, the host stream test, as explained previously, all test standards serve the same purpose by providing a route for demonstrating the ability of fire stopping products to maintain compartmentation. For penetration seals, as you can see on the left side, UL 1479 and ASTM E814, which are equivalent tests to achieve the F and T rating, which is expressed in hours. The European EN 1366-3 incorporates the testing of standardized system and the results are then classified as per another standard. It's called EN 13512 as integrity E. That would be equivalent to the F rating and the insulation EI, which would be equivalent to the T rating. The same principle really applies for the joint systems. 
And also all joint testing standards allow for imposing a cyclic movement before the testing to simulate real construction environments. For perimeter joints, ASTM E2307 tests multi-story curtain wall setups and EN1364-4 focuses on the spandrel area section of the curtain wall only. The rating or classification principle remains the same as it does for penetration and joints. On this occasion, it's really important to mention the situation for rain screen cladding systems. Here we have the NFPA 285 and BS84141, which are medium and large scale testing standards and they do not include ratings. These standards should not be mixed up with the ASTM E2307 or EN1364-4. They serve completely different purposes. Very nice, Constantine. So many a times you have uh, we come across this question that is there a difference between testing and certifications? Would you would you give us a brief interview on uh, what is the difference between testing and certification? Absolutely. So testing and certification, this is really important to understand. Let's start with the test report and the testing. We use the example of a ULU certification scheme because this is what you most of you would be familiar with. Test reports, as you see on the left side, they contain observations of product performances at a time tested. Test reports are snapshots of performances presented in raw data and for external people designing Firestop application, this is not really of relevance. Then one or multiple test reports can be classified against performance criteria with the so-called DIAP, direct field of application, and ACCEP, extended field of application, and then summarized in a classification report. And this is what you can already work with because they contain data on actual applications. Now, on the next step, all the way to the right, finally, a certification means that this set of application is presented including further characteristics, for example, VOC, acoustic performance, or air and water tightness. More importantly though, third-party certification schemes certify a product with the use of auditing procedures, for example, the UL follow-up service to ensure that the product quality is consistent and the product exhibits the expected performance for a long time after the initial testing was done. So as a summary, test reports are raw data and snapshots, certification and fire stop means scope of applications and consistency. So to get fire stopping right, you will be requiring certifications and not test reports. So on the next slide, you see an example um, besides the EU certificate of certification. That will be the European CE mark together with ETA assessments. These are official document issued by a notified body accepted under the European construction law. And an ETA assessment itself is not publicly listed by a third party, but it may be listed publicly by the manufacturer. Whilst the ETA itself is an assessment at a given time, the COC document you see uh, on the top right side, which goes along with the ETA and is referenced with the ETA, ensures the quality consistency on the highest level and the product manufacturing, which is observed over the official process, factory process control system. Now let's take a look how this looks on the American side of testing. So under UL testing, fire test results are directly transferred to a so-called UL listed system. The extent of DIAP and ACCEP rules are less than under European certification schemes. And the listing itself, that's the result of the testing is online available under the Euro product IQ, which can be accessed by a free of charge account. The listing goes along with the UL classif classified mark you see on the bottom on the product itself. And this certifies the product performance and also that the manufacturing is observed under the UL follow-up service. Now, here you will see uh, an example of a UL listed system on the Fisher FFB, F FBB UL Firestop block. And in a UL listed system, as you can see, the application is described in a really detailed level and it's leaving no room for interpretation to ensure that the installation on site replicates the tested system almost exactly. 
Now, let's put it all together. Um, and here you will probably see some familiar logos and marks. And on the left side, you see certification schemes. And on the right side, you see um, different testing standards. So UL, which we all know as a testing laboratory, does testing based on both ASTM and EN uh, standards and issues test reports, certifications, and marks. If testing is done with UL under an EN standard, then we will get a ULEU third-party certification. And if it's done as per ASTM UL standard, then we get the ULUS listing. You also see some other logos like the ETACE mark, Intertech logo, Warrington certifier, and they're all well known. And the UAE Fire Life Safety Code contains a list of several of these agency which are accepted in the UAE. Now, what does it mean for Fisher as an international company? We as Fisher also work with an international product range. This means we have products tested to European standards, certified under CE mark and ETA, as well as ULEU. And we also have some certifier Warrington documents. And we also have, because we are an international company, around 400 UL listings and UL classified products, and the listings increase monthly. And under European testing, you usually get one certificate which covers many applications under UL testing and US uh, listings, you usually get one listing per one application, which can incorporate more than one product. So at Fisher, we have, as Constantine rightly said, we have more than 400 listed systems under the American tested team, as well as we have nearly 11 products which are tested under the European norms and uh, they have listing which result in more than 400 case different cases thereby ensuring that your project is safe and it we will ensure that all your solutions as required are met so it is very clear that firestop is a system it has a testing standard and then there is a certification scheme. So what is most important is the certification rather than the test report itself. So when you talk about a system, there are certain parameters that are there within the system. For example, the substrate, whether the penetration is through the wall or floor, what kind of wall or floor is there? Secondly, you would have the penetrant type and size. So what are the types of the penetrant, including if there is a pipe, what type of pipe it is, what is the size? Then we have the insulation type and size. If there is an insulation on top of the service, then we have the very important annular gap and the joint width. So the gap between the penetrant and the periphery of the opening and the gap between the two adjoining assemblies that is called as joint width and the annular cap. This also is mentioned within the system test itself. Finally, the backer and the sealant is given. Now, essentially, the actual field application should match the tested system. But as we all are in the construction side, we know that there is an ideal world where we do the testing and then we come across this real world where the parameters might not might not match in the ideal world we do a proper coding and proper everything so we make sure that the annular gap and everything is maintained and those are reported properly but when you go to the site unfortunately the fire stop planning is not there from the beginning so the one who is making the breach or the opening the civil contractor sometimes does not coordinate with MEP contractor and he might end up with an opening which is giving you an angular space much larger than the planned system. So because of these, many a times these parameters which are listed in the system do not match. So Constantine, how do we solve this problem? What do we do when the listed system parameters do not match with our actual field application? 
So it's a good question. Uh, in this case, we don't leave our customers alone. And in these cases, Fisher issues uh, something called an engineering judgment. And uh, so also known as EJ and engineering judgments are based on the guidelines set out in the IFC, International Forest of Council, and in-house experience and extensive internal tests by Fisher. The engineering judgment issued by the manufacturer are acceptable within the UAE uh, Fire Life Safety Code. And it's really important though to mention that EJs cannot be issued in lieu of tested systems. And EJs are always issued only to specific project and specific applications. So as a summary, engineering judgments can be issued if there is a scenario where there is no direct test evidence to support the specific application, but, and this is really important, if existing test data allows for interpolation or extrapolation. The author has to have sufficient experience and must be granted permission by the manufacturer to design engineering judgments. However, also engineering judgments do have their limitations as we will explain on the next slide. EJs cannot and will not be issued by a manufacturer if a tested system exists. If the test evidence, is, uh, test evidence the manufacturer holds is insufficient, if the request is technically nonsense, that also sometimes uh, happens, and if not all information needed to judge an application has been provided to the manufacturer. And it's really important that we always keep in mind whatever we do in fire stopping, we are always responsible for people's life safety. Great, great. Thank you, Constantine. So uh, with that, the most important point you have mentioned here is that we as Fisher, we take life safety very very seriously so you can be rest assured when you come to us we behave as consultants that we tell you what is the right thing to do at the right time to do so at this time i believe we have taken enough time and let us before we go into the uh, questions let me just inform you again that this session is only the session where we are concentrating on explaining you or giving you a brief idea on what is going on behind fire stopping before it reaches your hand. So we have done an extensive amount of research, extensive, extensive amount of testing, third party testing, certifications, so that when we come to your site, you have peace of mind that you have somebody professional who's taking care of one of your problems in a professional way. Just as a reminder, we will be holding our third series soon. In the third series, we will be talking about the essentials of the correct applications. We'll be debunking some myths and we'll be showing some of the applications related to Fisher. So we'll show you how we can give you very, very effective, efficient solutions that you could use on your project site. Please use the question answers pane to uh, ask your questions and now we move on to the question answer session right so let me just open up my screen for the questions and read out some of the questions that have come in we thank you very much for the number of questions that have come in are quite a few however we'll try to answer as many as possible so Send me, uh, can you be so kind to send me via email PDF presentation that you use for that webinar? Sure, we'll be sharing our webinars. Thank you. And do all the, the and Ramiya has asked a question, do all the fire stock materials fit it for two hours? What is the criteria for achieving one hour, two hour, four hour in line with the room requirement? Right. So Ramya, this question is was uh, aimed at answering uh, during this webinar. Basically, the requirement of number of hours is set out based on the fire consultant and the fire life strategy of the building itself. Some of these guidelines could be found in the several of the codes, be it NFPA 101 or IBC requirements. So based on the assembly itself so for example if you have a two hour rated fire assembly 
you need products that have been tested in systems which are for two hours so there would not be a question of two hour relate rated product so your the right question would be does your product have a system test of two hours so we say yes then you use that system in that particular assembly i hope i have answered that question yes so the next question is as deva approves the grp substation do you have any plan to produce pirated grp uh mr zohair we are not grp manufacturers we are just a solution provider for fire stopping thank you request to share the ppt via email this is already answered how do you compare fire stop motor with the fcp panel motor is better for any shape and airtight packing i feel mr amit thank you for your question it's a very very nice question very relevant to what we are doing today so we have two entirely different systems one is the motor and one is the panel system the applications of each would be discussed in the third part of our series however in brief let me tell you that both of these systems have testing behind them to ensure the rating that you require coming to the air tightness even the fcpa system has been tested for air pass air leakage so when you see the uleu of fcp panel you would definitely look at the table which shows the air leakage at different pressures so both of these are good both of these systems are required under different circumstances for example if you have extremely congested uh, services where you cannot access to set up the foam work to take the fire stop motor application this application there would be using the panel coated system cutting it into shape fixing it using the fm however when you come to floor applications that you and you foresee that there might be a load application on top somebody might put their foot on top so you would prefer the motor similarly the rating is slightly different so you need to see based on your actual application great danny has asked a question in this chart on slide number 18 it shows there is cyclic movement requirement for e in 1366 and 1364 that four but i have gone through these the standard is not there please clarify uh constantine would you like to take up this question uh yes it's a um it's a good question the the reason is that these testing standards they go hand in hand with the classification um standards which would be in 13501 or also the technical report um of the EAD uh, European Assessment Directory and um, the rules for the movement would be in there. Great. So I hope that answered your question. So as I told you the presentation today was just very brief to just give you a brief idea but behind that you are rest assured that we are taking care of a lot of things in the background. All right. So hello Muzaffar and the Fisher team we are often asked by clients if flow penetration fire stop is required all throughout a certain floor level i often refer to ibc code section 714 and 715 are there any any other standards which i missed or i should be aware of uh mr ramon chito thank you very much generally in all the compartmentation related sections of codes be it the international codes ibc or any of these codes they always specify the floor as a separate compartment and this is also the basic concept of compartmentation including in the uh, fire life safety code of uae it is also specified over there where the floor itself is a separate compartment or a assembly which is dividing the compartmentation so you would have to refer to these codes i have referred to them briefly in our first part of the webinar you can have a look in that also right uh christopher has asked for field verification do the test report and the certification need to be retested or renewed for some time uh, uh christopher this is a good question constantly would you add would you like to add an answer to this question 
uh, Constantine, your mic is mute. Yes, I'm sorry. So um, it depends on um, on the certification, whether it's five years or 10 years. Um, test reports, of course, never expire really because they're a snapshot and um, certification depends on the certification schemes. Um, but usually they are, they are, yeah, they should be renewed. Um, the manufacturer takes care of the renewal and um, you can be sure though that whenever you install a Firestop application based on a certification which was valid um, at the time of the installment, then um, yeah, this will be fine. So just to add on to Constantine, there is uh, two things here. One is the test report, which he said it is always valid. And then there is the certification. Now certification is what is needed to be renewed. So whenever you ask, a question about uh, the certification you always ask about the renewal and the status of the certification so the listed systems that you see on the ul website also are a reflection of the test report so you could see a listed system which is like five six ten years old but they are still valid because they are online and they are still valid because the ul follow-up service is still continuing so as long as the product remains same you do not need to have a retest if the parameters within the listed system are matching with your field application. Right. Uh, what kind of information we can see on an EJ? I usually see F rating there, but T rating not mentioned. Why is that? Yes, Danny, uh, the EJ is generally issued based on the request that is received by us from the site application. So for example, if the F rating requirement was not mentioned, we would generally not issue the F rating or the insulation rating in the EJ itself. And generally the F and T rating is governed by, again, the IBC and the other codes where they are specifying the fire separating assembly requirements. So you will have to look at that. And based on that, you'll have to issue a, a EJ request or raise an EJ request. And based on those EJ requests, we issue an EJ. So in general, Fisher EJs will always contain all the requirement that was mentioned by the requester. So if the, requ if the requester had requested for a F rating, we would mention the F rating. We would also mention exactly what is to be applied and the sketch would be there within it for easy understanding. Uh, will a, rec a recording be available later as my audio is poor quality? Yes, the recording will be available and we'll share the same with you. And it will also be shared on my LinkedIn also, as well as on our website. Right. Do requests for issuing engineering judgments incur any cost to the client or contractor? Uh, well, it depends on uh, individual situation. And until I have a clear idea of what kind of uh, situation is presented to us, whether there is, there is a requirement of new testing, whether there is a requirement of anything special, Based on that, we could answer that. So in general, the general answer is, if it's not that much, then probably it would be free, depending on the customer or client. Or if there is something uh, in behind it that we need to do additional, that might be better. So that depends specifically on the case to case. Please share a slide to your uh, thank you that is done. Yep. Could you explain more about P and F rating? So Abhilash has asked this question about T and F rating. So T and F rating requirement is generally given in the IBC code or the other fire life safety status codes. So quite often it is the F rating that is more prime in the walls. So you would find this requirement mentioned very clearly and specified very clearly in the fire life safety strategy of the code. What we as manufacturers do is we test our products in systems by giving an F and T rating. Now, T rating is generally not a pass-fail criteria, right? F rating is. So, for example, if you have initiated a test saying that our system would resist the flame passage of flame and smoke for two hours, right? And if during the test they find that the, uh, the seal has cracked and the flames are passing by, so we would stop the test and if it is not two hours, we would say it has failed. However, for T rating, it's just a measurement from start of the test till the time 
the non-far side of the assembly has reached 180 degrees. So that is only the thing that is mentioned in the T rating. Now, based on your fire life strategy co uh, plan, you would choose the system relevant to your application. For example, many a times you would find that a wall, which is the corridor wall, would require a high T rating, right? Many a times also these location the lobbies which is essential for escape would require a higher t rating also in some of the codes there are specification that the floor penetration should also have a t rating right so that's uh, the simple answer for fnc rating uh, so let us just check with the organizer if we have some more time to answer some more questions. Yes, I think I have got a nod. Yes, you can answer more. Can Fisher provide test reports on specific pro products test conducted? So Ulysses has asked about some of the test reports. And as we discussed during the presentation, let me ask Constantine to answer this question. Uh, question, uh, question is, can Fisher provide test reports on specific products for which the test has been conducted, Constantine. So first of all, all, all our products are tested, not only um, specific products. Uh, we don't give our test reports um, because of two reasons. Um, first of all, test reports contain sensitive information, um, R&D information uh, and raw data. And this leads to the second reason. These raw data are usually um, misinterpreted by people. So, and we want to avoid that um, some applications are designed um, upon wrongly interpreted data. And this is the second reason we don't give our test reports. But we give out uh, our certifications. Um, and um, yeah, our certifications are to an extent where um, the vast majority of applications can be solved with it. And if not, then um, we would work with engineering judgments. Great. Thank you, Ponsti. Okay. So uh, there's a question from Ms. Jibin. Does the movement of pipe and riser affect the fire stop system? Uh, Konsti, would you take up this question? MEP movement within the system. Yes, I can take it up. So um, yes, yes, it does. Uh, it depends on how much it moves and what, um, what system is used. Um, there are also testing um, principles to test uh, pipe movements. Um, this would be a situation where uh, we need to take into consideration the actual applications and this is something where um, I think our official service commitments comes into play and um, yeah we will take a look at the application with you. But yes it does affect the fire stopping. Yep. Which is the best solution for fire stopping electric opening? Why motor is recommended? Mr. Mohammed, I would invite you to be part of our third webinar, which is going to happen soon. And please stay tuned. And that we'll be discussing in detail about each and every application. We'll talk about this over there. Right. In case of cracks coming in motor system, is there any repair procedure available without affecting the integrity of FM200 protected rooms? Constantine. Um, actually, I would um, I wouldn't know this answer right away, um, to be honest. So uh, we would pass this on to our uh, technical team, and um, yeah, come back to you. Yep, sure. So we'll be answering this question through email. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Are Fisher at any stage bringing out an app to help contractors to log and document the process of installation? Com, that's a great question, and we are working uh, in developing these uh, cutting edge technology, integrating the IT systems within our systems. And I am hoping soon that we would be having an app which would help you log. And even after logging, you would still need to have those stickers on because that would give you a physical evidence of fire stopping being done. And soon you would have something in mind which would be like uh, with a QR code or something that you could scan and you could keep typing in the application that you have done on the project site. However, I think for a long foreseeable future, there would be a requirement to continue with the stickers 
with an add on to uh, it side of it yeah right and uh, let us see some more questions what would be the lifespan of install firestop application after how long should the installation be replaced or renovated so generally our firestop products apart from the system tests for firestop are being tested for uh, age by exposing them to age accelerated testing right so we can safely give you a life expectancy of up to 30 years however you have to be sure that none of these firestop systems once installed are being uh, mistreated or being tampered with so if they're not tampered with you could give a life expectancy of say 30 years right even though it is not shown in the fls drawing that the floors are fire rated every floor and slab are fire rated yes abhilash absolutely right the generally the fls would be concentrating on the uh, horizontal compartmentation because vertical compartmentation is assumed to happen at every floor right can you be so kind to send via email 100% fill and uh, I'm sorry i missed the question if it may pick it up can you send thank you we'll be doing that yes is if you're protected if your product is tested to both astm as well as en standard then which standard you follow at the project site again mr saiduddin uh, this would be depending on the requirements of the project and the actual uh, fire life safety standard so we'll be giving you accordingly the system uh, what would be the lifespan of the install password application after how long to be? yeah that's already answered if the cable tray is having more than 100 percent fill and terminated is there any way to treat the same again these are these are related to uh, applications we'll be talking about these applications in the third part and what would be the lifespan oh, that's already done and if this is covered within en uh donald has asked this question can you explain about spandrel performance and if this is covered within en 1364 and astm e2307 for per perimeter fire barrier test and i'm sure donald you are yourself an experienced person to answer that question yourself so apart from that de definitely the spandrel performance is given by uh, the requirement is given by several of the test standards which are not related to en 1364 and en 2307 which we are assessing the assembly itself as a whole so if the spandrel fails the system has already failed so i hope that answers your question and uh, i think we would wrap up with this uh yeah system. um i think on the tougher on the, on the facade topic, um i think it's it's really important because um the testing um that sometimes uh is done um in facades doesn't really replicate um the actual facade that then is built on a project and um fire stopping material is only as good as the least adjacent um rated member which is usually the facade um and then it really comes into play what uh how much movement uh, the fire stop you can ta uh, can take when the spandrel starts uh deflecting under fire conditions and so it's really 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 important to take um the overall system into consideration great so uh i think now we have touched uh 4 30 and my system is saying that okay the time is over so i would like to thank you all for joining and some of the questions which have been missed we will surely try to answer them through the uh, medium of email. We'll be connected to our websites and the LinkedIn. And uh, thank you very much. Looking forward to you guys joining us again on our third installment, which would be really interesting because we'll be talking about the application. How do you plan your fire stopping? We'll debunk some of the myths related to fire stopping. And uh, we would help you do proper job on fire stopping. Thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, thank you also. We wind up. Side. We would request your. Yeah, Constantine, go ahead. No, I just wanted to thank you from my side as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
so before we finally sign off uh, we would request you to do the polls uh, your valuable feedbacks is expected so this will help us to take it the take the feedback and take it to the next level uh, i hope you enjoyed this particular uh, webinar a tri series on firestop and uh, the key important thing is that once you're done with the third firestop webinar then you are eligible for the certificate so please be part of our next session also and uh, please take advantage of the certificate uh, the poll is open now and uh, in next 5 minutes we'll close the window thanks thanks all